Good evening. How you guys doing? There you go. Guess what day it is. Guess what day it is. Thursday. This is the day. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I'm glad in it. Was that what you were going to say? That's what I was going to say. Right on. Actually, I was going to say it like, this is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. See? That's actually what I was going to say. So cute. Ugh, i got to turn the camera. I don't know. We're, we're way off. Oh. Oh. What? Ah. My, my shirt is stuck on my back. And it makes me look fat. Is that what it is? Mm hmm Okay. Well, Jimmy went to work today. How was that, Jimmy? I found out I get to go back to work on Monday. By her own resolve, she was able to find this out. It was not an easy task. Not at all. But. Sometimes you have to persevere. Yes, we did. Sometimes you have to get outside that box and you have to go search for the answer because the answer might just not be there or somebody might not be willing to give you the answer it's that you have to do the work yes you have to find the answers you have to search yep. just like your bible study that's it you get a piece from us but it's up to you to do the work it's up to you to verify what we're saying is true it's up yes. to you to read god's word and understand and see that what we're quoting what we're reading is true yes now you might interpret it a little bit different and that's just the holy spirit speaking to your heart does that happen to you well yeah i may read something and as we read even when we read through what we read through tonight things stick out to me that means something to me and things stick out to jim that means something to him, and that's okay because god meets you where you're at and you might learn something new you might see it from a different perspective. Exactly. Like the Gospels. Yep. I'm in a very good mood. Oh. Well, that's good. Are you? I'm like excited. I'm like, whew. I can hardly contain myself. Why are you so excited? I feel like just busting out into dance. Why? I might just... Skip down to my underwear and dance for ah, that. That's that's weird. Watch out for what you say is weird. It's weird. Are you there. bringing the ark into town? Is that what you're doing? Can't I be joyful? You can. All right. So we're gonna be in two. And three. And I guess my glasses are really dirty. I'm scratching. It's too late. I can get scratched. So angry. <laughs> Did you have any other thoughts or points you wanted to go to before we get started? Thoughts or points that I wanted to go to before? Well, how about this? Because it pertains to both of us. So I've been back at work since Monday. And I work with approximately 12 other people at my location and then another six at a separate location. So there's things that are required by the federal and state government that require you to use social distance and make accommodations for to provide a safe 
work environment for your employees. Mm -hmm. And so most of my week was spent in coming up with ideas and ways to keep, you know, my team safe. Right. Because I care about my team. I care about my team before I care about the job. Right. Because without my team, I have no way of getting the job done. Right. So, we live in the desert and snakes are out found a snake across the street and then they threw it in the desert between us and another building which makes absolutely no sense because usually they drive them far far away and then they release them but for some reason they said hey let's throw it in the middle of two buildings okay so um number one be wary snakes are out this one was only about an eight nine inch snake um it actually tried to bite somebody but oh. luckily he had on his boots so it didn't penetrate his boots but nevertheless he got bit by a snake, yet the snake did not pierce his boot, so he was safe. So this is your snake bite uh, warning? Snake bite warning. Okay. Be on patrol. Be wise. Especially with it's your like pets. It's like an infomercial. Especially with your pets. So your pet doesn't know, your pet's gonna get bit. Number two, if you're getting ready to go back to work, which a lot of people are, um, some people were just off to the 4th. Some people are going to be off to the 15th. But nevertheless, you're going to go back to work and you're going to go back to work. And it's going to be way different than what you left behind. Right. So do this. Start planning ahead. Um, a lot of my week was just spent planning and, and moving things around and creating social distance and creating safe places for my, my, my team members to work, to eat lunch, um, all aspects of the job. So if you can get a jump on it, get a jump on it. My wife's getting a jump on it. Her boss is getting a jump on it. Get a jump on it. So if you can plan ahead, do so. Yes. Sometimes and I realize, you don't know what you can plan for, though. And I, I realize, you know, None of, us, none of us are given tomorrow, but there's nothing wrong with... Oh, being wise with your time. Being Absolutely. wise with your time, yeah. yeah. So I could have been a little bit, I guess, more... I, I think it's hard because none of us know what to expect. We have an idea of what we might need to do, but it doesn't really... Until the whole ball of wax starts rolling down that hill, you really don't know how it all is going to look. So. But get ready. Yeah, especially... Get ready yeah. because people who fail the plan... So, do the best of your ability. Do all you can. Do all you can. So, there's your infomercial for today. Okay. What oh, do you have today? Another? No, no, I'm done. What do you have? What are you talking about? I don't know. What do you have for? Did I don't have Do you have, have anything? Enough. Did you have anything for today? No. Okay. Well, what would you like to do next? Did you want to get into the study? Sure. Okay. I don't know what you're doing now. No, I don't know where we're going. I don't know. That's today's infomercial. Real. Unscripted. To the point. Point. Pointless. Huh. You're not pointless, babe. So, let's get to the point. Do you want open in prayer? Sure. Or do you want me to pray? Sure, why don't you pray? Lord, I just looked at this time and I just ask that you would bless it and I pray that you would just have your hand on the study and have it be a blessing. Lord, I look at the study. I pray that it would be good. I pray that we can... Do a quick package and get the word out to your people. Just say, amen. Amen. All right. Ready, steady, go. So we start in 2 Samuel 2, and David becomes king over Judah. And 
he blesses the people of Jabesh Gilead, the men from Jabesh Gilead that um, took down Saul's body and and buried it for that would be the right thing to do. So he blesses them and he tells them that they he blesses them for their kindness that they showed. But because he's now became the king of Judah, now Judah and Israel are split. And the people for Saul are on Israel's side, and the people for Judah are on David's side. So there's this split. And because there's a split, then there's always a side. And as there were sides, they end up one day at this pool where half of them are for Saul and the other half are for David. And Jimmy liked to refer to it as the first UFC fight because they had they said hey the commanders say hey let's take these 12 men and let them fight each other and so they did and each one grabbed their head and thrust his dagger into the opponent's side and they all fell down together it's a pretty short-lived fight wouldn't have wanted to pay for that fight so it causes this whole battle to go on and as they are going into battle Abner, the commander for Israel, has this guy chasing him named Ashiel. And Ashiel won't stop chasing him. He just wants to keep chasing him. And Abner's like, hey, you know, why don't you turn aside to the right or the left? But he's like, no, I'm just going to keep chasing you. Why? Because he just didn't want to give up. He refused to give up. And? He kills him. Yep. So, finally they get to the point where they're like, hey, we should just end the battle for, for today. And so because one side said, hey, we should end the battle, Joab, David's side, Abner says, cool. If you wouldn't have said that, we'd have kept fighting. So they do. And then they all go back to their own sides. And that was it really weird. They fought really strange back then. One side had 19 losses and the other side had 200 and 360. Yes, each side. So, David's side had 16 losses and Abner's side, mm -hmm. side had 360. What are you doing that face for? I didn't know what that was, but then I saw it pop up on the screen, so now oh. I don't know what it was. Now, now you know what it is. Yes. So, that's where chapter two went. So, chapter three kind of follows up with the long word between the house of Saul and the house of David, which grew ever stronger, but the house of Saul ever weaker. So, David's getting stronger, Saul's getting weaker. Um... We talk about some sons, some firstborn sons. David had some sons. Now, this son that he's fighting is the son of Saul. And so, if you kind of read into it, Ishba is being kind of, kind of guided around. He's like a puppet king. Yeah, kind of like. Oh, I don't know. Chip off the old block? Oh, my men made me do this. Oh, oh yeah. it's because of the men. Yeah. So, you know, that was his example of what a king was, is somebody who's directed by his men what to do. Yeah. And so it just got to the point where they sit down and Abner and David reconcile. So, they sit down, they talk, they made a covenant, and the, one of the pieces of the covenant was, you know, the, uh, tell, David tells him, you, you must not appear before me unless you bring my bride, Michael, how? Saul's daughter, when you come to present yourself to me. At the same time, David sent messengers to Ishabel, 
son of Saul, to say, give me my wife, who was returned to me by paying a hundred Philistine foreskins. So, Ish Ishabel sent for her and took her away from her husband and her son, and she weeped all the way back. Does she have a son? Yeah. Oh no, from her son, son of, sorry, son of. Oh, I was going to say that. And he followed her weeping as far as ban her. But Abner said to him, go back. So he turned back. Um, so he ends up taking her back to David. Yep. So David said, by my servant, I will save my people from Israel, from the power of the Philistines, and from the power of all their enemies. Abner also spoke with Benjamin, and then went to speak to David in Hebron, concerning all that would be agreeable to Israel and the whole house of Benjamin. Um, Abner was accompanied by 20 men. They sat down. They talked it out. They made a covenant. Now I will go assemble all of Israel for my king, my Lord King, that they may make a covenant with you. You will then be king over all you hit which to rule. So David let Abner go on his way in peace. Well, remember the cats that got in the first UFC fight and then they just kept fighting? Yeah. Well, they're heading back. And they see Abner. Well, Abner had, during this battle, came to peace with David. But before that, because they got even, remember? So before that, he had during the battle I don't I don't know where we what we're talking about we're talking about a brother that was killed oh yes his brother was killed sorry yes remember because the guy wouldn't stop chasing Joab so David let him go in peace when Joab and the whole force had he had with him arrived he was more of informed Abner son of Ner it came to David and let him go on his way to peace. So Joab went and said to the king, What have you done? Abner came to you. Why did you let him get away? Don't you know, Abner? He came to trick you to learn your comings and goings, to learn everything you do. Joab then, Joab then, then left David. He didn't ask to go. He was just like, This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take actions into my own hand and Joab left David sent a messenger after Abner bring him back from the cistern of Sarah, Sarah? Sarah. Mm -hmm. but David did not know when Abner returned to Hebron Joab took him aside with the within the city gates to speak to him privately hey let's go over here and talk I just need to talk to you real quick no. And there he stabbed him in the abdomen. Yeah. And died for the blood of Ashel, Job's, Job's brother. Yes. So what was it? It's kind of bloodlust. Kind of bitter. Yeah. Killed my brother. Brother's dead now. His brother wouldn't stop, though. So that's what happens. Later, later Dave heard of it and said before the Lord... I and my kingdom are forever innocent. You know why they're innocent? Because the blood wasn't on his hand. And then at that point, it gets real. May the blood of Abner, son of Ner, be on the head of Joab and all his family. All his family. Not just the one that did the bad act. But now I'm going to put this on your whole family 
May Job's family never be without one suffering from discharge or one with skin disease or a man who holds a, a, a distaff or one from falling by the sword or one in need of food. pretty bad. So what did he do? What what What's this have to do with being stuck? Well, when David made the covenant, he made the covenant, and he's a king, so he's making a king's covenant. So at that point, that covenant's a covering. Mm -hmm. So you can't have somebody come up and do what they're going to do. Didn't even ask any questions. Just, what'd you do? What'd you do? I'll be back. Go slay this guy, come back, and be like, yeah, that's what I did. But I did it for you. No, no, no. I did it for you. But I did it for you. You know what I'm saying? It's like me saying, hey, honey, I washed all the, the colored clothes, and I washed them in hot water, and I cleaned them really good because I poured them in bleach, and I did it for you because bleach makes clothes clean. Does. And then she could just say, well, may you and all your clothes just have spots on them. Yeah, that would not be good. It's a bad situation. But it's a situation that was made by a choice you had to make. Yes. That's a, the choice. Poor choice. The, the choice didn't, and, and, and it also shows you that maybe your poor choice doesn't just stick with you. Yeah, it affected everybody. It stuck with him. Yeah. It was not good. And David did want to make sure that people knew that he was not it it was not his his thing because otherwise there would have been no peace with Israel and Judah. It would have caused the division in the whole kingdom. That's how big this decision was that it affected. It's pretty terrible. So some key words are in the beginning it said the Lord bless you and, and that was for the people of Jabesh Gilead David prayed blessings on them for burying Saul and then some other key words were they fell down together when the Israel side and the Judah side decided to fight in the UFC fight and then they all died and then finally Abner's side tells them, hey, let's not fight anymore, and they decide to stop fighting, and that was good. But the last one, David's house grew stronger, Saul's house grew weaker. We see that happening all through chapter 3 in decisions that are made and consequences that are lived out. So. Did you see that since the beginning of this happening? Well, yeah. With, with Saul has killed thousands, and David's has killed tens of thousands. Yes. Yes. So, it was hard to find a very key verse out of both those chapters. Those chapters were pretty all over the place, but 2 Samuel 2, 21 says, Then Abner said to him, Turn aside to the right or to the left. Take no one, of, take on one of the young men and strip him of his weapons. But Asheel would not stop chasing him. And because of that, he ended up having to kill him because he wouldn't stop. And because he killed him, Joab killed Abner and because of that, that caused the whole possible division in the kingdom, except David cursed yeah, him. Yeah, David had to curse him, and then David had to lament, and then the people of Israel saw that he was really sorry. So sometimes it's okay to stand down. That's tonight's topic. Sometimes it's okay to stand down. You don't always have to stand up and do what you think and you want to do. Sometimes it's not all about you. So, the background was in 2 Samuel 2, David anointed Judas king. David's anointed Judas king, causing David and Saul's houses to war. And then in uh, 2 Samuel 3, we saw that Abner leaves Saul's side for David's side, but he has he is unsanctionedly killed by Joab, which was a no bueno situation. And then we can see that the aim was God is the avenger. Sometimes it's good to live to be avenged. You know, it's good to live another day and let the Avenger deal with 
the vengeance instead of feeling like you need to get the vengeance every time. If people would have just let God have the vengeance, then maybe they wouldn't have been dead. <laughs> they wouldn't have been dead. Or skin disease. Your skin disease, your leprosy, your crutches, or no food. food for the rest of their life. Yeah, it's pretty uh for a litany of bad things to happen. That was pretty quick for him to come up with one. That. One choice. Yeah. One choice. But it's a big thing when that one choice destroys a life and I mean it's a ripple curses effect. your kingdom I mean curses your, your family line and I mean it's just it was a lot. It's a ripple effect. Yeah. Nope. And there goes the wave. That's a very good thing. And it comes from one piece. And it just continues to go. But it also brings his decide Shezin brought David to a point where David had to also make a decision. Yes. So you can choose to let the person who made the bad decision keep you going bad with them or cause you to lament. Yes. Because David could have said, yeah, all right, good job. Yeah, that's what happens to you fools. And that would have been very bad. He would never have been able to combine the kingdom. And we see in uh, our homework, which is Second Samuel 4 and 5, he will eventually become king over all because he reacted correctly in this situation. So, so it's kind of cool because we get to see, not only did we get to see David as a young man, coming underneath yes but now we see David transitioning into a position where he's coming he's becoming that covering yes to others so mm -hmm. and we get to see the wise decisions that he makes why he's a man after God's own heart yes mm -hmm. that's all I got Dogs are sleeping because they know they gotta go to work on Monday. Yes. Yes, they do. Are you lamenting over going back to work? No. Are you lamenting going back to work? No, but if you have a position that you can go back to, you should. Wholeheartedly go back to it. Joy and be grateful for that, I think. Because there are a whole lot of people that don't have one to go back to. Nope, nope, nope. All I can tell you is from what it was to where it's at now, the changes that, you know, and just the small changes that we've, we've put in place, and there's going to be more and more and more and more and more changes changes that are going to come into place it's it is no, thank you i have 850. i had a bunch of yes my, sour patch. my stomach hurts i, I think that's candy. why my stomach hurts too but it it's it's weird going back yeah i'm not gonna lie it's very strange it's very strange when as you know as a team when lunchtime came we would get together and we would break bread as a group in a group setting and we would completely separate ourselves from work and just chop it up and laugh and have fun and and now it's quite a bit different when we're laughing and we're having fun and you know we're more than six feet away from each other and that's like one of the few times you get to see a coworker's face because they're eating because the rest of the time you know we're you know masked up and it's it's 
different that that's going to be the norm the norm it's different um but at the same time it's not something that god has put an overwhelmingly you know like my spirit's not overwhelmed and this comes from a guy that is has high anxiety suffer from anxiety and I suffer from depression so throughout this whole lockdown I was not depressed it's fully gone and then coming back to work I had a day of I'm not going to say full on anxiety but I was anxious but it wasn't like it wasn't like how, and um, you can say it however you want, but it wasn't how my normal disability would hit me when I hit, you know, I have an anxiety attack. I was anxious, but the anxiety came from, it's gonna change, and I'm anxious to get back to work to see what it's gonna be like, what I need to do, and God saw fit, to make my days at work very very busy and he gave me a lot on my plate and next thing you know you know I've got team members that are coming in and say why haven't you rang the bell it's time to go home and I'm like well you have eight minutes you could still be working and it's like it takes us eight minutes to lock up and I'm like having fun you know we're able to laugh again we're able to communicate with each other. Um, even if your mask are on? Even with our mask on, you know, we're able to do that. We're able to, you know, I got home 30 minutes late because, you know, me and a couple of my crew members were able to sit and commune with each other. When for the last, I mean, I still got my calendar up and I'm just blown away by the amount of time I was not at work you know it was almost just about a month and two weeks yeah. that I was not there and when I got back time had stopped my calendar was the same my desk was just as I left it I opened my email and I was just wow there's like 400 emails in oh here my gosh. and it, it was just like time stopped but at the same time time continued yeah so yeah quarantine s slowed us down you know when I got to that point and I looked at my email and I saw that I had missed some calls yes time stopped for this for a moment but time till still did continue and yes I got older the day I went back to work it's your birthday so God gave me the gift of going back to work on my birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And God saw fit to give me another birthday. So not only was I blessed with another birthday, I was blessed to go back to work. I'm glad I didn't pull somebody off the side at the city gate and say, hey, let's talk. You know? And I can honestly say that this study kind of got me ready for some of the things that I went back to because different people deal with stress differently. Yes. And so, you know, some things have changed at work and, and be it for the good or the bad, you know, if I would have thought about or been right where I am today in today's study it would have affected me a lot more differently than it would work affected me on, on Wednesday but Wednesday night's study affected me on Thursday so I was able to glean from the word and then it came over I see that I see how when I'm in something hey Mario Hey Mario. I see how God's word has definitely helped me doing the fear not ones um, 
daily. I, I just been so excited each day. It's always a new verse. It's always a new, a new direction. But it's, it's the psalms we're in right now. And I mean, these are David's psalms. David's psalms that he wrote, as he was running from Saul. And and, and it just so happens to coincide with this study. And so yeah, I've enjoyed um, doing the studies. We, I do, I used to do. I, I've always done my live streams. But this is this is a different for us. This is a new for us. I've enjoyed being able to do this with you. Um, we go to church and we go and we are in the Word, but we don't normally sit together. So I, I've really enjoyed this. I just I thought it was awesome. So, and I think it was just what we needed, and God knew we needed it before we went back. So I think that's an awesome thing. I have an allergy cough too. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, it's stupid. So he. So everybody thinks he has COVID because he's coughing. So, yeah, and that's another thing. It's like going back to your norm. Well, I'm going back to norm. It's spring. I sneeze. I cough. Allergies take a hold of me. If it happens to rain during the next 30 days, I will be destroyed for two or three days in a row because the humidity plus all the pollen in the air and everything, it just jacks my sinus. Coughing, sneezing, sneezing, coughing social distancing do you have covid you know it's not like the normal thing it's like <laughs> it's so funny somebody coughs in people's eyes get... it's like you know you know we up here in ridgecrest were fortunate enough to have a great deal of earthquakes and so so fortunate so you know where we where i work if a big truck drives by it was like for a while everybody was like a meerkat was that an earthquake? Yeah, I, I can't. I I have to be honest. When we had the 4.0 earthquake last week, I immediately posted it on my page because my boss immediately called me and was like, did you feel the earthquake? And it's just like, yeah. I mean, it's not like we're not going through enough already. You know, within the last year, we had all those massive ones already. But, you know, I God is still like faithful. Too. And God it's just faithful. like, it, we're going to bed. I was like, yeah, I'm being rocked to sleep. God can do it, and God is doing it, and but, I've enjoyed it. But this week's study, like I said, this week's study, you know, it's just another confirmation on how God's Word is alive and relevant yes. today, just like it was then with David. Yeah. Because some of the situations that David has dealt with, especially with what David has dealt with today, has been shown in my week people made decisions and those decisions came down on it it's just like you said I'm so tired of social distancing I agree I too <laughs> you tried to reach him there we go Mario now you guys have touched but it's amazing when you can see real life tied into what you're learning yeah this week the word mimicked life, or shall I say, life mimicked the word. But don't you feel only because we were doing the study? You would would you have noticed it had you not been studying it, and and or would it have just been happenstance and this is just going on? You know, the only reason I feel sometimes that you catch it is because you're in the word and God shows it to you. Don't you think? Yeah. Otherwise, it would have just been stuff that was going on. Yeah. But I wish I would have had it two days earlier, but now it's like, oh, well, I get it he two days it later. Needed it. You know, I got it when I needed it, but at the same time, it's like, it's like the decisions that I made kept me credible. And maybe some of the decisions that others made did not keep them credible. And I was still able to be a leader and it not affect me in a way as may your family have no food, may your yeah. family be broken. That's the that's the curses David put on Joab's you know? family. And don't get don't get don't I didn't curse anybody, okay? And that's good. Number one, I didn't curse anyone. But because I have God as my backing and God's got my back. The words that came out 
were taken care of by the Lord. And that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Because nobody likes to be jammed up while they're eating their birthday burrito. That was a nasty situation. But I'm glad it worked itself. And once again, honesty, just trying to keep it real. Real is real. Keep trying to keep it real. You know? And, you know, I didn't want to be a habitual line stepper, and I didn't want to do when keeping it real goes wrong. No, we don't want to be tested. So, you know, and when your God is bigger, when you say, my God is bigger, when David says, you know, may the blood of, may the blood, may your words, may your words be the blood on your head. Oh, yeah. May it be you. May you. It be what you said, because that's when the guy said he killed Saul. And okay, then this is what happens when you kill Saul. Yeah. Let your words be your own judge. Same thing here. Let your actions be the judge for you. And today's uh, Bible verse from my live stream was: "The Lord is with me; I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me?" And that was David's uh, psalm. So. You know, it's it's awesome because really, what can mere mortals do to me? They can't. They can only do what God allows, and they can't take your salvation. You know. Yeah, you know, they can't take my salvation, and they can't take away the fact I have to pay taxes. Lucky you. Well, I don't know. They call sometimes and say my social security number's locked, and I'm and like, like yeah! Woo! That means no taxes. Don't keep, believe that. Keep it locked. Don't give them. Don't give them any information. Yeah, well, I asked them to keep it locked this year, and I still got to do taxes, so it was a lie. It was a lie. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Stay, stay relevant, stay read up, and um, be ready. Yes. Today is the day. Today is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. No matter how much is on my plate when I come back to work. God will not give you more than you can handle in a week. <laughs> God will give you more than you can handle so you can go back to him because otherwise you'd try and do it on your own and that's when you fail. I said a week. I mean, it started it started on Monday, but God gave me enough that I could handle in a week. There you go. You know, and I've got next week to worry about, but I can tell you this much. Guess what day it is? I got a fortune schedule. I'll be off tomorrow, and I'll be off on Saturday, and I'll be off on Sunday, so I'll be able to take a moment, refresh, refresh reflect, get into the Word, Get rested and be ready to go with what's still on my plate. Yay! Because, yeah, God gave me more than I can handle, but he gave me enough time to handle what I needed to handle this week off that plate. Good. How about that? That's How about them apples? I like those apples. How about them apples, baby? That's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Mario, are you at work? I don't know. He might be listening. Are you there, Mario? He is there. I'm going to give Mario a chance to, to respond. <laughs> but then another thing we learned was you can take the information that people are giving you and and not do your research so you can take even us talking about the bible and you can just say oh well they said it so it must be true or you can take the information that was given to you and you can research it yes, yes I, I am. am well still working. still working amen i'm glad for you brother i'm glad you're able to to be able to provide for your family. Um, 
we're slow. Well, you know, you have my phone number, so if you're looking to move and you're looking for something a little faster, <laughs> give me a call and I might be able to give you a good line. I'm pretty sure he's he's locked in where he's at. Mm. He's got a whole family. He does have an old family, but you're only locked when you're locked. <laughs> but, what was I? Taking things, not taking things at face value, taking what you learn and verifying it for yourself. And not expecting others to give you the full story on things. And David, you know, was willing to see past what had happened and allow for himself to be vulnerable and share, you know, where he was at and, and that he wasn't a part of that. But um, if you are not willing to check your facts and make sure you're right, then you're not going to get the full benefit of any kind of study at all. Because God doesn't expect you just to take the spoons that are being fed and, and take it like that. You've got to dig into the word for yourself. Praise the Lord. Which kind of brings me back to my wife. My wife got some information yesterday. And then I got some information yesterday. And, and so she was like, no, I've got this fact. So I questioned this fact for her. And... Then we got told another fact, and so my wife, being very hyper-focused, and the one who really pays attention to words, took those words, applied it, went on a search, and with her search, found the answer to the question of whether or not she could go back to work, and found out that she actually could have been working this, this entire time. About a month, yeah. Yeah. But... You know, God's timing. I'm glad she wasn't working. Because then I would have just been here. Yeah. That that was really the only reason I was looking. Because he's been gone about a week now. Well, this week. And, and so I've been here. And though I love painting, it doesn't make me any money. <laughs> it brings you joy. And it's just a drain on it's not a drain on the household. We it, are both working now, starting Monday. So, yay. But once again, that's why I say, you know, you got to do your due diligence. Yes. You've got to look into the Word. You just can't take things from face. And value. when you do that, it God will grow you. You will get the things that stick out to you. Because we share the things that stick out to us. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's the only thing that's in there. The things that you dig in and you find are the things that will stick out to you. So... That's what we ask you guys to share. Yeah. So. so. I don't know if you can reach. Okay. Thank you so much. We shall see you tomorrow. He's really trying. He's so far. God bless. Bye-bye.